Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Hopefully you all are keeping well. Juma Mubarak. Inshallah, we'll uh, start right now. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Inna alhamdulillah wa nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiru wa na'uzu billah min shiruri anfusina wa min sayyati amalina. Man yahdihillahu falamudillala wa man yudlil falahadiyala. Ashadu an la ilaha illallahu wahdahu la sharika la anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. Ya ayyuhal lazina amanu tukku allaha haqqa tukatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. Ya ayyuhal nas attaku rabbukum alazi khalakakum min nafsin wahida wa khalaka minha zawjaha wa batha minhuma rijalan kathiran wa nisa'a wa attaku allaha alazi tusa'aluna bihi wal arham inna allaha kana alaykum rakiba. Ya ayyuhal lazina amanu tukku allaha wa kulu kawlan sadida yuslih lakum amalakum wa yaghfir lakum zunubakum وَمَنْ يَتِيَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزٍ عَزِيمًا أَمَّا بَعْدٍ All thanks and praise is due to Allah. We seek Allah's help and His forgiveness, and we seek refuge in Allah from the evil within ourselves and the consequences of our evil deeds. And whoever Allah guides will never be led astray, and whoever Allah leads astray will never find guidance. And I bear witness that there is no God but Allah alone without any partners, and I bear witness that Muhammad وسلم, is his servant and his messengers. O mankind, fear your Lord who created you from one soul and created from you from it its mate and dispersed from both of them, many men and women, and fear Allah through whom you ask one another. O you have believed, fear Allah and speak words of appropriate justice. He will then amend for you your deeds, forgive you your sins, and whoever obeys Allah and his messengers has attained a great attainment. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. My dear brothers and sisters, another blessed day, another blessed Jum'ah for all of us. Alhamdulillah, we made it. We're still healthy. Inshallah, all of us are still keeping well. I know that uh, there's a lot going on right now in the news as well with uh, the variant, the Delta variant, the pandemic. Uh, hopefully, you all are keeping safe and keeping well. Inshallah, today we'll continue this uh, series that I started on about the 99 names of Allah. We've gotten as far as about uh, 29 names so far. So inshallah, we'll cover three more names uh, today. And we'll continue this journey with the names of Al-Adl, Al-Latif, and Al-Khabir. Hopefully, inshallah, I'll provide you with enough details about these attributes so we can discuss them. And we can hopefully learn from these names and apply them in our own lives. So the first of these names, Al-Adl, which means the just. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who sets matters in a way that is equitable. He puts things in their rightful place. It is the opposite of one who is unjust and oppressive. Now, linguistically speaking, the word adl is composed of the letters ain, dal, and lam, which means to act justly, fairly, to be equitable, to be impartial, to balance, or to make equal and uniform. If we look at this from the lens of the English language, justice is the broadest of senses referring to a principle about receiving that which is deserved. To deserve something implies an action that has taken place, something that must be done for the one who deserves justice to receive that which is just. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most just and is never unjust. Now this is established for us in the Quran in Surah An-Nisa verse 40, where Allah tells us, indeed Allah does not do injustice even as much as an atom's weight. While if there is a good deed, he multiplies it and gives from himself a great reward. Now, there are two things being emphasized in this verse for us. First thing is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always just. Absolutely, there's no doubt about that. And secondly, if we perform a good deed, the reward for that deed will be multiplied for us, and that reward will come from Allah directly. And this kind of justice, when it is performed, is something being done to make someone whole or, someone being done, or something being done to improve equity. By performing a good deed, we are in effect bringing something or someone to a state better than where it was before the act was performed. Now, as always, our fair share in all of these attributes is something we should try and recognize. And in this case, we must understand how we are just. Now, to know how we are just, we must understand our actions. We have to develop this sense about how we treat ourselves and how we treat others. So, for example, uh, let's examine how we may treat ourselves justly. If we decide not to observe one of the pillars of Islam, 
Salah, for example, then we are bringing, then we are being unjust to ourselves. We're being unjust uh, because we are taking away ourselves from something that Allah has prescribed. And as Ibn Umar narrated in one of the uh, authentic hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever misses the Asr prayer, then it is as if he was robbed of his family and his property. Now, this analogy of a robbery is a simple idea for all of us to understand. We know that when we are robbed of something, we want to be made whole again by having that which was taken away returned back to us. And in effect, when we skip our salah, we are robbing ourselves of family and property. And why would we ever want to do that to ourselves? So the point of guarding our salah is also emphasized in the Quran. In Surah Al-Baqarah verse 238, we are told, observe the five obligatory prayers especially the middle prayer, and stand in true devotion to Allah. So this emphasis on the Asr prayer, and also this emphasis on the five obligatory prayers in the Quran should be a clue to us to say, guard your Salah, make sure you observe your Salah at the appropriate times. Now, we know the story about the Salah uh, when uh, the Prophet ﷺ went into the heavens during the Isra and Miraj, we would have had 50 prayers. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, ultimately five prayers. And we remind ourselves that these five prayers are important for us because it's a way for us to remind ourselves constantly that there is a supreme power over all of us. Now this world is not our, our final destination as we all know. And each salah is prescribed to us at a specific day to remind us throughout the day that this world and everything is all the creations within it will come to an end someday. And it's a way for us to reflect, you know, break away from your work, break away from your studies and reflect on the changing of the day from day to night and from night to day. And that's an important observation for us to keep in mind because things are changing always, including ourselves. And if we're not able to pray Salah for several valid reasons, that's okay. Make up those Salahs at, at some point if you can. And we must always strive to make up or make sure we maintain uh, this posture about Salah, because ultimately that will be one of the first things Allah will ask us in the day of judgment is how well did you guard your Salah? Now, this doesn't mean that, you know, when I say make up your prayers that you just, you know, pray all the Salah at one time, you always have to make sure that we're keeping the time of day in mind as well. Now, typically speaking, when we hear the term justice, the first thing that comes to our mind is that we're talking about law and order. Um, somebody did something wrong, and then we were, we're trying to correct that wrong. Um, but in the case of this, this um, uh, name of Allah al-Adl, it goes beyond just that justice in the way of law and order. You know, let's consider the way Allah has created all of us, the human body, for example. There's so much diversity just within our own selves. Think about the way each of our noses look, our eyes, our ears, our facial features, um, where our head is located, where the shoulders are located in relation to the rest of the body, all of these things are placed exactly where they need to be. So imagine if your eyes were not where they are on our face, on the top of our body. If they were somewhere else, how would that affect our ability to process this world, to survive in this world? So just having everything in its place is justice from Allah to make sure that not only are we able to survive in this world, but that we're able to build communities, build relationships with people, with our environment, make sure we can even tend to this environment. So all of this is an example of Allah being just to us. You know, so just starting with ourselves, we can start seeing some of those examples when we start reflecting uh, in that way. And if we start modifying our body, what would that look like? You know, how can you improve what we already have? And that's just a thought that uh, is an extension of what I just mentioned, which is, you know, Allah already is the best of all, has the best of all knowledge. Why, how could we make that even better? So just a reminder for us. And as we grow older, you know, things in ourselves are changing. So now we're even further reminded of how everything at some point will draw to a close and how this perfection at some point will be you know, we'll see its end.
So Alhamdulillah, just a reminder for us to make sure that we always are looking not just around us, but also within ourselves on how we can um, relate ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's talk about the next name, which is Al-Latif. And Al-Latif means the subtle one, the gentlest, the one who is gracious and the one who shows grace. And it also means the one who is aware of all of our desires, everything that we think about, everything that we do, whether we perform an act in public or if we perform an act in private, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all knowing of the affairs of his creation and the state in which that creation is at any point in time. The root word of Latif comes from the letters Lam, Ta, and Fa, or Luth. There are four main meanings of this root word, and the first one of them means to be kind, affectionate, to bestow with kindness. Second of these meanings mean to be delicate and refined. Third of these meanings is to be subtle and to know the details of all the affairs. And the fourth meaning is to treat with regard for circumstance. The concept of Luth is a reference to being kind to someone in a way that they don't notice your kindness. It also references something that is too subtle to be seen or felt. So Al-Latif refers to Allah's infinite kindness and complete knowledge with which he bestows gifts and favors on us all. Taking us gently from one situation to another, causing us to benefit without us even knowing it. So in the Quran, uh, you'll find in Surah Al-Anam, verse 103, No vision can encompass him, but he encompasses all vision, for he is the most subtle, all aware. And this is a reminder to us that Allah is ever watchful over us. We can find examples of this in our lives. For example, he subhanahu wa ta'ala makes fruit ripe for us with no intervention from us. Farmers plant the seeds in the ground, the plants sprout over time by drawing nourishment from the soil, from the water, and that's it. It just grows. Another example is, you know, when children's teeth, when they're young, they fall out and then permanent teeth come in place. Nothing needs to be done for that system to carry out in the way that it does as we age over time. Or the changing of the season is an example, other example that comes to mind. You know, the movement of the sun in, in, is the same throughout the year, but then the weather changes. Uh, you've got four seasons in some places where the each season is very well pronounced. And this is, this is a way for us to Allah, for, from Allah to describe to us that, look, all of these things are happening without any intervention from you. You are there to experience them. You're there to enjoy them. And going back to Salah, the changing of the night from day and day from night is also a reminder for us to always stay constantly connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, in uh, Surah Ashura, verse 19, we're told Allah is subtle with his servants. He gives provision to whom he wills, and he is the powerful, the exalted. Allahu latifun bi ibadihi yarzuku man yasha wa huwal qawiyul aziz. And Allah knows that which is good for us and prepares us for the things that we desire if they're halal. Everything in this world, my dear brothers and sisters, exists with the will of Allah. <clears throat> when we are ready, Allah will give us that which we desire in a way that we may not have thought about. You know, think about a time when you used to enjoy something that was not pleasing to Allah, or at least you knew that was not pleasing to Allah because it was in some way not permissible. And you would tell yourself, no big deal, nobody else's business, you can choose what to do what you want. And we have that choice, Alhamdulillah. You know, Allah has given a, not just to us humans the choice, but also to jinn. So we have this freedom of choice, which is very powerful. You know, if Allah wanted us all to always be in obedience, Allah would have made all of us as angels who are always in obedience of Allah. However, as people, we should recognize that there is the ability to choose whether you follow or not. And that's why we call ourselves Muslims because we submit our will to the pleasure of Allah. But going back to the analogy I was trying to, the point I was trying to make, you know, the one day you wake up and wonder why did you ever do these things in the first place? And you realize that what you were doing may not be benefiting you. And then you make the intention to become better, improve yourself, uh, work towards getting yourself back on to the path that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed. And that too is a choice from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We can choose 
to go back on the path that Allah has, has given us and has told us and given us plenty of examples about in the Quran. And we can see this every time you open the Quran and read about uh, from, um, you know, from Noah alayhi salam to Ibrahim alayhi salam to Lut to Sulaiman. All of these are examples of how Allah says Allah has punished people who have transgressed and also given forgiveness to those who have. So we must always remind ourselves of this. And Allah is al Latif, always taking care of us. So inshallah, hopefully Allah will allow us to reject that which is not good for us and allow us to return back to the path that has been prescribed to us. Last but not least, let's discuss Al-Khabir, which means the acquainted, the all aware. And Khabir comes from the root words uh, Kha, Ba, and Ra, which has two main meanings. One of them is to be aware and to understand the reality or the inner nature of something. And the second main meaning is to test, to prove, and to try by experience, which results in inner knowledge. Several verses in the Quran remind us that Allah is the possessor of all knowledge that is unseen. For example, in Surah Al-Nam, verse 73, we are told, Alimul Ghaybil wa Shahadati wa al Hakimul Khabir. He is a knower of all, seen or unseen. And he's the all wise, all aware. Also in Surah Saba, verse 1, we are told, All praise is for Allah to whom belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is on the earth, and praise be to him in the hereafter. He is the all wise, all aware. The one who is aware of the secret aspects of everything, he knows about all things, whether you want to believe it or not. And nothing can be concealed from Allah. He knows what is in our minds and he knows what is in our hearts. He knows what is in our souls. He knows what we intend to do. And this attribute of Allah is referring to his ability to know what is deep within us. The secrets that other creations cannot see. And only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has this ability to know all things about his creation. So my dear brothers and sisters, you know, Given that we know all of these things, we repeat and remind ourselves of all of these things that Allah is well aware. Allah is the creator of the universe. Allah knows what's in the heavens, knows what's within us, knows what's around us, things that we don't know, things that we don't hear or see visibly unless it's right in front of us. All of these things are a reminder for us to know that we are constantly in the care and supervision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this world. And this is just a reminder for us to recognize that just how we observe one another and we learn from one another. Allah is watching us, Allah is taking care of us. And Allah is the one to whom all of us will return one day. In Surah Luqman, verse 16, Allah reminds us that even if a deed were the weight of a mustard seed, be it hidden in a rock or in the heavens or the earth, Allah will bring it forth. And surely Allah is most subtle, most aware. So this name should be something that we can all resonate with. We can all understand and, and, and see that nothing in this world is hidden from Allah. And this should be a reminder for us to always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his mercy and for his forgiveness. Because on the day of judgment, we will all be questioned about our actions, what we used to do, what we used to say, how we used to treat one another. How did we treat the animals who were in our care? How did we treat our children, our parents, and so on and so forth, our community members even, our neighbors even, all of these folks have rights over us. So this is just a reminder for us to say, what are we going to do to make sure we're always improving on that characteristic of ours? How are we making sure we're connecting with people, connecting with our responsibilities on a daily basis? So let's make sure that we always seek uh, guidance from Allah. And this is especially true you know, especially when calamity falls over us. You know, we ran into a time when the pandemic was still new, everything was still unclear. Vaccine came into the picture. All of a sudden, we're feeling more stronger, more happier, more safer. And then now we have this Delta variant. Now, all of a sudden, we're feeling like, okay, things are going bad again. And that can create a cycle of, of um, uh, you know, stress as well as, you know, sadness to some. And it's it's not a it's not an excuse to fall into that trap is is really the message I want to convey uh, at this point is just making sure that we always are connecting ourselves with Allah because all of these things are in the in their natural state. Viruses and bacteria exist in the natural state just like 
we exist. So we should find ways to understand that this is, uh, you know, part of Allah's scheme, whether good or bad or different, however we may end up seeing it, but always keeping ourselves in check, especially uh, our mental state, because this can have an impact also on our spiritual state if we are not careful. So our mind, our body, and our spirit are all connected to one another. And when the health of one suffers, the health of the other also suffers too. And we should be mindful about these things, especially in our personal affairs, uh, as we go about our day, as we go about our interactions uh, within our community. And this can be overwhelming. So inshallah, hopefully none of us are feeling overwhelmed about this. And hopefully we're all doing our part in making sure that we're all taking care of one another. Because when difficulty strikes us, you know, sometimes we do have a tendency to, to uh, fall into, you know, some deep, deep thoughts that hopefully none of us fall into. Um, but let's connect again with Allah. Let's make sure that we're always reminding ourselves that all things will come to an end and that we must always remain uh, close to the foundation of Islam and always having our will submit to the, Allah, uh, to the will of Allah. So remind ourselves that Allah is al-Latif, al-Khabir, and al-Adil. He's just, he's subtle, and he's taking care of us. Uh, you know, if anybody, um, you know, who would feel sad, I, I would say it's probably the story of Yusuf alayhi salam, where, you know, his faith was tested like nobody else's, but he stood firm in his belief of Allah through every single trial. And that should be inspiration for us to say that, you know, any trials that come our way, Inshallah, we will be as firm as Yusuf alayhi salam uh, in that case. Inshallah, I'll conclude this khutbah in the second half. Aqulu kawli haza wa astaghfirullahi wa lakum wa li sa'ir al-muslimin fa astaghfiruhu innahu huwa al-ghafur al-rahim. Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa ala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the name of Allah, the exalted, and blessings and peace be upon the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, my dear respected brothers and sisters, today I briefly touched on three of the beautiful names of Allah, Al-Adl, Al-Latif, and Al-Khabir. And with each one of these um, names, inshallah, you know, we should try and bring ourselves closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, contemplating about these attributes, bringing ourselves to thinking about how these attributes apply to us on a day-to-day -day basis. And let's all remember to be gentle and kind to one another uh, as a way of being thankful to Allah, as Prophet Sallallahu says, show gentleness, for if gentleness is found in anything, it beautifies it, and when it is taken out from anything, it damages it. So let's make sure our intentions are for the sake of Allah, because he knows all that we do. He knows everything that we have and everything we desire. And let's take account for ourselves before Allah takes account for, uh, for us on the Day of Judgment. Um, let's also understand that this world will also come to an end someday, and every minute that we spend in this world is a minute that we are closer to the end of ourselves and also closer to the um, end of this world. As recorded in Sahih Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ was walking through the bazaar, and the people on, were on both sides of him, and there he found a dead lamb with very short ears. And he took hold of its ears and said, who amongst you would like to have this lamb for a dharam? Now, mind you, this lamb was dead. And they said, we would not like to have it even for less than that as it's of no use to us. So he says, do you wish to have it for free at any cost? And they said, by Allah, even if it were alive, you would not like to have to possess it because of the short ears and the other deformities that this animal had. Um, so thereupon Rasulullah said, by Allah, this world is more insignificant in the eyes of Allah than this dead lamb is in your eyes. So my dear brothers and sisters, let us pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides our hearts towards him. May we all find inside of our heart the strength to stay firm on the path of Allah. And may Allah forgive all of our shortcomings for he subhanahu wa ta'ala is oft forgiving most for us all. Oh Allah, when we stray, please forgive us and allow us to return back to guidance and the path that you have prescribed for us. And please improve us in character so that we may become better versions for ourselves. And oh Allah, please have mercy upon our parents and pardon their transgressions and their shortcomings. And please have mercy upon us all on the day of judgment. And please keep us away from the torments of the grave. And O oh Allah, please guide the Muslim Ummah closer to you and protect us from those who lead us astray, including Shaitan, who is the open enemy to us all. And O oh Allah, please allow us to live a dignified life in this world and in the hereafter. And please guard our health and the health of those who we love and the health of those who endeavor to provide care and service to the members of our community 
who are in need. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasna wa fi al-akhirati hasna wa kina azab al-nar. Rabbana faghfir lana zunubana wa kafir anna sayyatina wa tuwafna ma'al abrar. Allahumma inna ka afun tuhibu Allah wa fa'afu anni. Allahumma inna ka afun tuhibu Allah wa fa'afu anni. Rabbil hamhuma kamar rabbayani saghira. Rabbana la tuzih kulubana ba'da iz hadaytana wa yahab lana. Min la dunka rahma inna ka anta al-wahab. إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعزكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروني اذكركم واشكروا لي ولا تكفرون At this time, my dear brothers and sisters, I'd like to conclude this khutbah. May you all have a blessed Jum'ah and inshallah, see you all soon.